Hello everyone, welcome back. I am so glad that you have come to this part of the lecture. This is almost the fifth lecture. Now we have only the design of member to be left. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. So firstly, we are going to design for compression and check for tension. So since we are designing for compression, we have to assume the FCD value. So FCD, I am going to assume it as 100 Newton per meter square. So for that, uh, from that I can find what is my area. So what is my load? My load is the maximum compression acting on the member. As you can see, it is 54.81 into 10 power 3 divided by 100. I will get my area. So I am going to go for back to back sections. Back to back and section. So this problem, it is an academic problem, therefore I am not uh, designing it in the in an economical point of view. I just have to make sure that it satisfies all the check criteria, therefore I am going for a heavy section. In case you are uh, in for a site work, then you can go for an economical section, you can do trial and error and find your uh, economical section. So the area is 548.1 meter square, millimeter square. I am going to choose two ISA 50 by 50 by 5 two numbers the total area comes to 5 uh, 958 millimeter square which is greater than 548 therefore it is safe now i am going to use a gusset plate thickness of say 8 mm now i have to find uh, since it is a, a compression member i have to find my slenderness ratio so kl by r, r minimum from the uh, section property i have found that it is 1.1.2 uh, mm and kl kl by r is since it is simply supported i can say it is a 0.85 into what is this 1930? 1930 is the distance between our purlins. So 1930 divided by R is 1.52 centimeter. Therefore, it becomes 15.2 millimeter. On being said, I will get my KL by R as 107.93, which is less than 180. Therefore, it is okay. Now, for the given uh, slenderness ratio, I am going to go for buckling cast C because it is an angle section from table 9C FCD is equal to for KL by R equal to 107.93 and FY equal to 250 I will get my table value from the table I will get my FCD value as 97 so I have to find what is my load carrying capacity load carrying capacity is 97 into the area of both the angles together it will give me 92.93 which is greater than 54.81 that is the original compression that the member has to take therefore it is safe in compression now coming to the uh, tension check part we have to just find the design tension so in order to find the tension we have to first uh, assume a connection for the given member so i'm going to go for weld connection for simplicity so if you go to page number 79 10.5.7.1.1 the weld strength is given so using the weld size of 4 mm my weld strength per meter it is you can find this formula in is 800 on the given uh, clauses so on doing so i'll get my weld strength as 535.2 newton per mm 1 by newton per mm into something into newton will give me my answer in mm therefore 1 by strength is for one angle since i have two angles i'm going to multiply it by 2 into 48.39 that is the tension that the given uh, section has to take so that will give me my answer in millimeter so the length weld is 45.2 millimeter i'm going to take it as 50 mm so my weld length i'm going to distribute in this way that is on the top part it is going to be 35 mm on the bottom part it is going to be 15 mm so this is how i'm going to provide my weld now coming to the tension calculation i'm sure you guys know how to calculate the tension uh, acting on a member so i'm just going to skim this part this is ag fi by gamma i'm not you can find all this in is 800 uh, class number six so a uh, tdg is equal to ag fi by gamma m not so ag we have found it from our two angle sections fi is 250 gamma m not you'll get 218 which is equal to tdg so basically for tension we have to find three strengths that is a gross a net and bearing so uh, the minimum of these three will be our design tensile strength so coming to tdn tdn since it is a weld uh, our, our net area and gross area they are going to be the same since it is a welded connection it is equal to 2 into uh, 50 minus 5 by 2 into 5 that is, this is very basic I am sure you guys know in case you have doubts in 
the steel uh, tension design let me know in the comments and make a video on it and tdn from the given formula you can find all these things and b i'm going to take it as 0.7 i'm not going to calculate b it is a big tedious process i'm just going to take it as 0.7 because i'm just checking here i'm not going to find the actual tensile strength when i multiply it so and so i'll get tdn is equal to 215.79 kN now coming to tdb so since there is no uh, weld in the vertical plane if there is no weld in my vertical plane there will not be any tension acting on the member there will only have shear so the formula for both the things on doing so i have got that tdb is equal to 65.61 kN so you can see that since i haven't provided any a weld in the vertical plane you can see how drastically tdb is less than that of tdn and uh, tdg so this is the lesser of all the three therefore tdb is my design tensile strength which is uh, i have to make sure that this is greater than the strength uh, the tension that is acting on the given structure so 48.39 is my maximum tension acting on it which is lesser than that of my design tensile strength therefore it is safe in tension so uh, what we have done here is we have taken the maximum compression and tension acting on a member so my maximum compression is minus 54.81 which is my rafter a b and f g that is this point and this point this is where my maximum compression takes place so this is my critical the most critical members of my truss so if these uh, trusses if i'm going to provide the given section the double isa angle for these two section i can provide it for these sections also that is if the critical load itself passes then all these small loads will also pass under the same section that is the uh, understanding here and similarly if the biggest tension acting on a member passes then passes for the given section then uh, every other tension uh, on the acting on the member will also pass so that is the case when you do it in academic uh, way but in reality uh, for economical purpose we go for different section for uh, the members with small amount of forces acting on them i'm going to just go for same section for all the members for simplicity so one thing i observed here is these vertical members they have very less load acting on it therefore i am going to provide only one section there for other things i'll provide double isa angle for this alone i'll provide single isa angle with this we come to the end we just have to make one more quick check that is the weight calculation uh, the weight calculation of the given uh, member because we assumed the weight when we calculated the dead load for the rafter here we assumed something self weight on the plan area is equal to so and so and the weight uh, weight of the bracing etc we assumed so we have to make sure that given structure is not uh, is safe even under the assumed loading so coming to the principal rafter this is very simple just finding the quantity and the length and number of sections used if it is a double angle or single angle for verticals alone it is a single angle and weight per kg this you can find it from your uh, this, uh, 800 and since we are using two angles i am multiplying it by 2 to get the uh, weight and then you have to find the total uh, kg just multiplying all these things so you'll get my total weight calculation as 258 and assume dead load of the truss is uh, 258 kg so assume dead load is 3750 newton i'm going to uh, divide it by 9.81 to get it in kg so my assumed weight is 382.3 kg my uh, given weight is 258.6 kg only therefore since this is less than this this is safe so with this we come to the end of the uh, video and i just have small connections connection details for you this is how my welding will be here 35 meter here 15 meter and here my welds are going to be present i'm not going to provide any uh, vertical welds so this is my connection on the top part of the on the top part of the truss at this part right so this is my ga roof cap so these are my purlins the blue color ones are the purlins and these are my uh, angle sections that is the truss members that we found earlier and these are my sections that we found uh, in the first part of the problem isa 80 by 80 by 80 these are 50 by 50 by 5 so this is how a connection detail will be this part of the truss where four members are meeting i will have a gusset plate i already found that the gusset plate thickness is 8 mm so in the presence of the gusset plate i will provide the welding like this and this is how it will be and similarly i have attached the uh, connection details for this part of the truss here so this is a, a member here two members are joining this is a gusset plate this is my weld and so and so and at this point 
here like one two three four five members are joining so a bigger gusset plate and this is my welding condition so with this we come to the end of this problem of roof truss design i hope you guys were able to understand it in case you had any difficulties let me know in the comments below and i'm also thinking of providing lectures on peb that is uh, pre engineered buildings i haven't found anything about them on the internet and since it is my project work i thought of sharing it also let me know what you think of it and whether it will be useful for you thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next video bye thank you so much for coming to this end of the video and hit the like and let me know in the comments if you have come to the end of this video the whole uh, series of the roof truss design thank you so much bye take care